Hey YouTube, in this video we're going to be revisiting the GeForce GTX 1080. We're going to see how well it can handle modern games in 2023. So games like Hogwarts Legacy, we're going to be looking at that. But in order to get more life out of it, we're going to be looking at SLI. We're going to test out SLI with the high bandwidth bridge. High bandwidth bridge was short-lived. It was a single generation. It was the Pascal generation. After that, NVIDIA transitioned to NVLink. And in the consumer market, they have pretty much killed it off at this point. The highest-end NVIDIA cards currently don't support NVLink, let alone SLI. Uh, nor do most of the modern motherboards on both the Ryzen 7000 series and the Intel Z790. SLI is pretty much dead. So if you want to get more life out of your Pascal 10 series GPUs, like a GTX 1080, for instance, you're probably going to have to be on Zen 3, aka X570 and Ryzen 5000. So something like a 5800X3D is probably the best I can best example I can give you of terms of squeezing out the absolute most performance you can out of SLI. So unfortunately, I don't have a 5800X3D, but I do have a 5800X. So we're going to be looking at that system with this dual GPU setup. And we're going to see how much mileage you can get out of a GTX 1080. So without further ado, let's get right into it. All right. So for this test, I pit both of the GTX 1080s in SLI. So we have the high bandwidth bridge. You guys can see it here. We were using this. And we're comparing it with the RX 7600, which I recently did a review. If you want to see how well that GPU did for a sub $300 1080p card, be sure to check that out. And then I also have the Intel Arc A770 in here as well. Resizable bar was enabled because there's no reason to have resizable bar disabled. It can only help you for most games, pretty much all of them. All right, for the test system, I am using the AMD Ryzen 7 5800X. So you guys are probably thinking, why are we? Why am I testing with an older CPU? Well, the reason behind that is because if you want to run SLI, you have to have either an AMD X570 motherboard. That's typically the most common one that supports SLI on most of the motherboards. The current generation from AMD, so the X670 and the B650, they don't support SLI at all. Neither do the Z790 boards. So that as far as I know, there are no SLI-enabled motherboards on the current generation of motherboards from both Intel and AMD. There are very few extremely expensive Z690 boards. We're talking like $1,000 plus in terms of how much that motherboard costs that supports SLI. And that's not really practical for what we're doing here. Just looking at some old GPUs. So... Uh, 472.12. I had to actually downgrade and uninstall the GeForce drivers, the modern ones, because for some reason, the second GPU, the second GTX 1080 was not getting detected. I mean, it would show up in Device Manager, but it was like code 43, and uh, it wouldn't show up in Task Manager, and I could not enable SLI. The NVIDIA control panel literally pretended as if that GPU didn't exist even though GPU-Z recognized it. So I had to actually downgrade the drivers, and then I finally got the GPUs to be detected in NVIDIA control panel, and then I could turn on SLI. So that was kind of a headache. That was some kind of NVIDIA driver issues. The newer drivers don't seem to like the SLI on the older Pascal GPUs. So just fair warning there if you're trying to get SLI up and running on a relatively decent platform, because X570, they still make these boards. You can still do SLI, but I think, you know, it's starting to become a dying breed at this point, and we're going to see how it does in the benchmarks. So the first game, Godfall. GTX 1080 SLI, no scaling. It literally, I tried to force it. I tried to, you know, toggle the DX11, the DX12. Didn't care. Full screen exclusive mode, etc., SLI wouldn't work. The second GPU sat there twiddling its thumbs doing absolutely nothing. Next up, Borderlands 3. This is an interesting one. So by default, again, just like with Godfall, 
Borderlands 3 did not leverage the second GPU at all, so that's kind of the result here. You see 66 FPS on Ultra Preset. Now, however, there was a way for me to get SLI running. I could force it in the NVIDIA control panel, specifically for Borderlands 3. I set it to alternate frame rendering, the second option. So AFR 2. And when I did that, we saw negative scaling. We saw terrible frame times, 27 milliseconds average, and 37 FPS. So Borderlands 3 is a game from 2019, so I thought maybe it might actually work, but no, it didn't really do anything. So definitely not worth the effort in terms of trying to get SLI working with Borderlands 3. Next, Horizon Zero Dawn on ultimate settings at 1080p. This game, again, no, nothing. Like, it didn't utilize the second GPU, although it was kind of weird. It almost seemed like it wanted to. And I kind of wager that the reason why the minimum FPS is so bad is because it probably tried to buffer something to the second GPU, but then didn't do it. And ultimately, this, these are the results. So basically 65 FPS at 1080p. So you can see the modern RX 7600, which is a sub $300 GPU, is giving a much, much better experience on this title where its average is 126 versus the maximum that the 1080 SLI was able to do in this title. So, so far, not a good showing. So hopefully we can find some other games that can actually show SLI in a positive light. Speaking of games that actually use SLI properly, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, this game, a lot of people are starting to say this game is kind of old to include on benchmarks, but it is an oldie. Well, it's not really super old, but it's it's still a good one. <laughs> and this is one that thankfully leveraged SLI probably in some of the best ways possible. And you can see the incredible minimum FPS on this title with SLI when it actually works. It's actually pretty good. So the minimum in this title, 117 with an average of 136. So this, this game actually scaled the 2.1080s so well that the 2.1080s were almost as fast as a single RX 7600. So based off of what we've seen previously, I'd say that's pretty impressive. Next up, a game that people might find these results even more impressive. So this is Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, the Endwalker benchmark, so, you know, the, the pretty popular MMO. So this is another one that surprisingly, although I kind of already knew this one had a good SLI profile from back in the day, um, I just wanted to make sure that it was still going. So it's still going strong, 178 FPS average. So this one put a smile on my face, not going to lie, when I saw the results, um, because this, uh, you know, a 1080 SLI at 1080p uh, actually beat an RX 7600. So it didn't, it didn't do as good in the minimums, but it did manage to technically secure a win on the average FPS. So, you know, we, we got to pick those wins. We got to take those wins when we get them when it comes to dual GPU in 2023. So excellent showing. Next, we've got Far Cry 6 on Ultra. This is another game just like Godfall. No matter what I did, the second GPU didn't want to do anything. It just wanted to sit there and do absolutely nothing. So this is this is literally the results of a single GTX 1080, you know, averaging 66 FPS in Far Cry 6. So compared to a modern GPU, I mean, even the Intel Arc GPU is significantly better than the GTX 1080 in this title. Um, but, you know, the AMD one is miles ahead. So this kind of shows that developers and all their post-processing technologies have kind of pushed gaming in this direction where you really just want a single GPU. Next, I tested one of the games that released earlier this year. This was a pretty big title, pretty popular game when it came out back in February. So Hogwarts Legacy on high preset. So again, this same trend that we saw with Godfall and Far Cry, zero scaling whatsoever. It didn't even leverage the second GPU. This is basically the results of a single GTX 1080. So, you know, 46 FPS on high at 1080p uh, native resolution. So, you know, it doesn't really look that good compared to a modern GPU. It's This is really starting to make a modern GPU look pretty good at this point. Um, despite the fact that the 7600 only has 8 gigs, same as a 1080, you know, that modern architecture is just is just 
tearing through the frames compared to the older GPU. The last game that I tested was The Last of Us. So The Last of Us Part 1, this game is really, really hard to run, and it shows here. Uh, not only do we have zero scaling with SLI, at this point, I was thinking, well, you know, this game was really hard to run, and SLI doesn't work with it. So these are the results. So 36 FPS for a 1080 SLI. Basically, the second card is a complete waste, doesn't do anything in this title, um, and these are the results. So... Overall, the average FPS, we're looking at 84 for the games that were tested. Um, this is not counting the forced SLI on Borderlands 3. I, I kind of threw that result out because that was negative scaling and it just doesn't, it's not really worth doing. So anyway, these are results, 84 FPS. Realistically, only two games had really good positive scaling and the rest had like zero scaling and one had negative scaling. So this is kind of what happens when you average those out. So 84, so it's... Surprisingly, this graphics card is not too far away from Intel's flagship GPU, which was kind of surprising, actually. It was pretty interesting retesting this old card, but the new 7600, it's just, these results just make it look pretty good for what it is. So the conclusion, so SLI, after doing all these tests, SLI is truly dead at this point. You know, none of the new games that I tested in 2023 that actually released in 2023, none of them used the second GPU. It's it's unfortunate, but none of them used the second GPU. Older games, Final Fantasy XIV, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, excellent scaling, just really good examples, but they're kind of like those one-off examples where it's like someone who has SLI can say, hey, look at what I'm able to do with two GPUs. Well, you know, eh, I don't think it's anything to brag about at this point. So some relatively modern games like Borderlands, they didn't use SLI. If you tried to force it, it results in negative scaling. Other times, if some games would allow you to do alternate frame rendering, they might have some graphical artifacts or they just wouldn't render things right. So I didn't really test any of those games in this video, but from what I looked at online in terms of games that support SLI, for workarounds, oftentimes it's, it's a suboptimal experience at best. So overall, it's an interesting technology. But unfortunately, it's lost due to the widespread adoption of modern post-processing effects in modern titles. And that's really the thing that I feel killed SLI. It's not that NVIDIA or AMD didn't want to do SLI. It was tough from the get-go, right? Being able to schedule the frames or however they want to do alternate frame rendering, even or odd frames, etc. There's multiple different methods that they adopted over the years or they tested different things to combat things like micro stutter because that was a big problem back in the day with SLI. But it's really modern game development that I feel really killed off multi-GPU because multi-GPU, it's a cool technology. I, I actually think it's a great technology, honestly, in terms of being able to scale up a graphical performance and fidelity. It's just post-processing effects don't really like it. That's ultimately what killed it. So if you guys found this video interesting or entertaining and got something out of it, uh, let me know in the comments below if you used to rock a NVIDIA SLI system or an AMD Crossfire system. We might take a look at that if you guys are interested in Crossfire in 2023. So hope you guys liked the video. If you liked the video, please leave a like. It does help me out. It does uh, motivate me to keep making technical content like this. And with that said, I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. And once again, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks.